Live from inside the power band, this is The Blah. In this episode, Everybody Dies. I'm your host, Kevin, along with my super companions, Ben. Did, did you have a question about the power? Yeah, I thought the same thing. <laughs> inside the power band? <laughs> <laughs> the power band. Just trying to keep it fresh, switch it up. And Chad. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. This week we're talking about, uh, we're paying another visit, rather, to our old friend Alex Garland. And we'll be talking about the 2014 science fiction, Think whatever, piece. probably a classic now, or will be anyway, Ex Machina, starring Dom Hall... Gleason, I know that's not how you pronounce his name. Quite a name. Yeah. Oscar Isaac and uh, what's that little girl's name? Alicia Vikander or something? Yep. Yes. Who, who else is in this? Nobody. There's nobody Sonia else. Sonia Mizuno. This. Yes. Okay. Um, You'll remember her helicopter. as the lead in Devs, Kev. Thank yes. you. There we go. And then uh, we got the helicopter pilot. I can't remember his name. He's somebody. I've seen him a bunch. That's it. Cool. So good movie. That uh, was, yeah. let's, that, thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week, folks. Let's high level this movie, man. Who wants to go first? All right, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> great movie. <laughs> good timing there. I have never seen this movie. So yeah. this movie came out. I heard it was great. I heard it was great. I heard it was great. Oscar Isaac, blah blah blah, and uh, I avoided this movie not avoided isn't the right word but i didn't watch it for no particular reason at all it sat in my netflix queue until it left (laughs) and i still (laughs) hadn't watched it so i was excited to be put into a position where i had to watch it and uh what a delight this was you Uh, are delight you are delight alex garland it was wonderful. Um, we have to just, invent a new word to describe you. <laughs> scrum <Yes>. trelescent. <laughs> exactly, man. It was scrum trelescent. Uh, it was so Alex Garland goodness and wonderfully filmed, wonderfully shot, wonderfully acted, wonderfully written, and a uh, wonderful soundtrack. What can I say? This is a really, really good movie. So did not see that ending coming at all. And, uh, yeah, I just thought it was fantastic, man. Definitely be watching this again. I meant to watch it twice, and I just didn't have the wherewithal. I was too damn tired. So uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Next person. I'm glad you dug it, man. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely... I knew I would. I'd like to dig into it a little bit more, but I just I love... uh, the idea of hearing kind of how you take it in 2022 as opposed to, yeah, you know, 2014. So it's a different world we live in. So I imagine the way that it's no absorbed is, is different. So, mm. um, yeah, mine's pretty quick. It's when I saw it, I was pretty blown away by the, the film craft and just the way that it was put together. Similarly, the plot, the twists and turns were really enjoyable. The cast was amazing. I am pretty sure I'm correct when I say this. I've been thinking a lot about it. And I'm 99% sure that I saw this before I saw any of the cast members in any other movies that were recognizable. So I saw this before Force Awakens, for example. Mm. So, oh, that's a death. Um, I mean, I just, I feel like if I had seen this after Force Awakens, I probably, I don't know, I I might not have quite been as absorbed just because Poe Dameron and Hux yelling at each other throughout the whole thing just kind of would have been kind of giggly funny. Mm. But um, but yeah, it's a good it's a good flick. I was concerned it wouldn't hold up. I kind of got a little nervous in the middle and a little bit maybe like, oh, this isn't holding up. But then it came good in the end. So I I, I dug Yay. it. Yay! Everything's okay. Yeah, Betty. Yeah, uh, I too. Uh, when I saw the Force of Week Awakens, I was like, hey, it's the dudes from 
Ex Machina. Yeah, everybody <laughs> from Ex Machina. Um, I think this is uh, this is like I don't know. I want to say this is how Alex Garland got onto my radar, and uh, mm-hmm. he's been on it ever since. Um, Boom. Yeah, I just like the uh, I like the films about philosophical questions that are derived from scientific questions, essentially. You know, mm-hmm. so exploration of AI is something that you know has been done in movies before. Uh, I think this one is unique and worthy, and uh, yeah, it's just really well done, beautifully filmed, uh, amazingly acted, amazingly written. The location is fucking incredible, <laughs> dude. The soundtrack is great. The special effects are great. And apparently they like, you know, did it on a shoestring. So fuck. Yeah. It's a good dude. flick. And it's his directorial debut, man. He, they knocked it out of the park. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That was Academy Award nomination for best original screenplay. Hello. I think it won for best sound. It won visual effects. Oh, visual effects, yeah, beat Star Wars yeah. for best visual effects, which is great. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, man, they they really, really cranked a home run on this one. I I do kind of feel like it. I feel like its half life is gonna degrade. I don't know if it'll hold up, like say a Gattaca or a Blade Runner. I think it was mm-hmm. like a moment in time, twenty fourteen, kind of. There was still a little bit of techno optimism, and so the twist here kind of really kind of drove the knife in a little bit. Whereas now there's a lot more kind of nihilism and pessimism in society. So I just I don't know if it'll hold up for the next twenty years, but it's still masterfully created. I'm curious if you guys think it there's any validity to the statement of it might not hold up over time. Um, I, I would ben, say you want to tackle that first. I would say yes. I'm not really sure where you're coming from with. I'm not sure if this is an attitude that you're holding or that everybody it, holds it as far be. as, uh, you know, where your relationship is uh, to technology and et cetera. Sounds like a Chad fantasy. Well, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I know there are definitely people that echo those sentiments for sure, but I don't know that it's everybody. And I don't know that that really changes anything for me, even if I think of it through that lens. So mm. Maybe I'm just thinking about it like – in comparison to another one of his works with devs where I feel like de- the flavor of devs was a little bit more, a little bit more nihilistic than this was in the sense that it like from the perspective of, of Ava getting out, regardless of the circumstances, it's somewhat optimistic from the perspective of Ava as the main character. But like, I don't know. Devs is like, a lot darker, I guess. And I feel like it better represents the, I don't know, society at large's viewpoint of tech. Like I'm a, te- I'm a techno optimist in the sense that I do think that there's a great opportunity for technology to kind of solve problems like some of our global warming issues. And certainly some of our health stuff coming up with, you know, being able to grow organs and, and do all this MRNA shit and all this really cool CRISPR stuff. But um, I don't know. I just, I kind of just get this kind of gut feeling that that this movie will be a snapshot in time as opposed to one that has a ton of relevance in the future. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that, man. I think it's I think it's pretty relevant. <laughs> I mean, you know, certain people are starting to talk about AI and it's a little scary, man, you know. Yeah. This is where I'm coming from right now in time and mm. so Looking at it through that lens, this is definitely relevant, man, because it's represent representative of that in some ways. And I think that while I'm plenty of a tech oct- optimist, uh, it's the human element behind that that I'm not an optimist of. You mm-hmm. know, people do not ask the question, should we, before they ask the could we. And that seems to be a recurring problem that gets us into all kinds of trouble. And uh, so from that angle, I think that, uh, you know, I worry about where we're going and people abusing and misusing technology. I mean, we're seeing it happen right now, you know, with algorithms, you know, for one thing. And um, like mine, you know, these 
Yeah, no, no, not like yours. Actually, <laughs> no, yours is uh, very beneficial to mankind. <laughs> Rating these movies, dude. You know, like, <laughs> Nobel that's what Prize we need them for, for science goes not to surveillance and monitoring and all this other bullshit. You yeah. know, and, nobody knows. It's the real reason it keeps our you know handful of listeners around. It's the <laughs> exactly. algorithm is the algorithm. Exactly, man. It's so at work. I, uh, yeah, it's keeping exactly. you engaged. <laughs> <laughs> it's sharing your private data constantly. That's right. It's giving you dopamine hits. <laughs> yeah, your private thoughts, man. Smash that like button. I love it. I am not amused. Anyway, I think that um, looking at it again through the lens of it being a film, um, content included, you know, it's Alex Garland, man. I mean guy really knows how to structure a great story and really knows how to shoot a great movie. I mean, this is as good as anything, man. I mean, this is probably better than Annihilation, which I need to watch again, but I'm not trying to take away from Annihilation, but this just had a beautiful sort of terrifying tranquility to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's part of what is its killer combo, in my opinion. It was super concise and, compared to a seven episode devs or whatever. Mm. Well, true, it's super concise in a good but, way. You know, yeah. Re, yeah. Just briefly relating to that thought, uh, it struck me. The idea struck me that I, I'd love to see this as a play. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was thinking similar yeah. at the four, end. Four four people in it, and spot. you know, like yeah. three or four sets. You know, like you could do it. Yeah, you could definitely do it, man. That's a very cool idea. I think that uh, continuing, like it's, you know, looking at it as a film, like I think it will hold up, absolutely. I don't think it's going to degrade, um, you know, again, because it's Alex Garland, it's so well written. Because really at the heart of it, you know, great sci-fi, cult sci-fi, cult stories, great films, like stories at the heart of a man, you know. If the story's well written, they can endure, you know. Like I, we've talked about it recently, you know, we've watched – a ton of old movies and we know the ones that held up and we know the ones that didn't, Mm. you know? And I mean, just, we talked about aliens and, you know, during the aliens episode, we talked about how, like I was kind of griping about like how the tech was low and you guys were praising that and how cool that was. And really at the end of the day, it didn't matter because the movie's still so good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I could still look past that tech and Mm. those analog effects, practical movie effects, the alien and so forth. Like, all that stuff still looked really good. And we were even able to pick out the parts that, you know, you could tell where they slipped up or they weren't that great. And it's like, it doesn't matter. The movie's still that good. The story's still that good. And it's just an actioner, man. It's not even like it's that deep of a story, you know? So looking at it from that angle, this movie, in my opinion, will hold up, you know? I think it really will endure. Like, I I mean, this is just me watching it for the first time in six, seven eight years later and uh man it was damn good damn good it's awesome i'm glad you dug it i definitely like in the middle of the movie i was like ah i don't know man and then by the time it crescendos out it was like nah that's fucking solid so i suppose it's not a surprise but i'm glad you dug it yeah yeah really really dug it man um i loved the uh i love the flying in on the helicopter thing (laughs) where it's just like two lines of it's like, so when do we get to his estate? And the dude's just like, bro, <laughs> bro, we've been going over his estate for like six years now. Yeah, right. I saw a little nugget that that, that was lifted almost straight from Quigley Down Under just to throw a little Tom Selleck out there. I was just about to say, it's just like Quigley Down Under. Yeah, so I don't know if that was intentional, probably. But um, in terms of in terms of the cast, I wasn't familiar with uh, Dom, Dom Hall Gleason. How do you pronounce his name? I don't know, man. I don't know. Benny probably knows. I saw Frank, this really I weird indie movie. I think it's Domino Gleason, not Domino. What did you say? <laughs> Domino? I think it's Domino Gleason. Domino? Okay. I think. Damn yeah. Irish names. I saw that really weird indie movie, Frank, that came out about like a dude who wears a fucking giant head that Michael Fassbender's in. It was a really weird movie. So I, I was familiar with him, but you know, this one for me was probably my intro to him where I, you know, he's essentially one of the key main characters like i would posit that he's not actually the main character that she's the main character but it's the movies from his perspective which is interesting he did a good job i definitely glad i saw this before i saw him as hux <laughs> right he was, he was such a weird i mean i enjoyed him as hux 
probably because I saw him in this and enjoy and like saw that he had chops in this, so that when he was just like Nazi spit shouting in uh, in the Final Order <laughs> uniform, well, I was just like, oh okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also an evil British douchey. I mean, come on, that too, that too. So yeah, he was he was good. He he is like such a good casting as a uh, nerdy coder dude, and I kind of want to swap him out with the uh, the main dude from. Uh, Silicon Valley. I think that would be pretty funny too. Wait, what? You want him to play Thomas Middleditch's part? Or I think you they should Tom, swap Thomas Middleditch to play I, if, this part. At first, I wanted Thomas Middleditch <laughs> to play his part, but now I want them to swap, and I just want to see both, and because I think it'd be good. I could, do, I would totally get down with that. I'm in, man. <laughs> That's all I think about when I hear Middleditch's name <laughs> is Dildo <laughs> Pogfell. <laughs> Oh my god! I I was thinking uh, it'd be interesting to replace Domnall with uh, JP from Grandma's Boy, <laughs> like sitting in a chair, drool crying. Yeah, I'll get you out of here, Ava. <laughs> Him being the coder, you know, wins the thing, and he's psyched because he finally thinks somebody likes him. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's totally fucked up because he me. He makes the robot voice at Ava. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. He gets upset. I too am a <laughs> robot. <laughs> I like it. Um, uh, I think unknowingly, my first exposure to Domo Domo. God damn it, Domo, Domo already got Domister Do- robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Look at what you just did there. Nice. Domo Domo. Uh, Domo, Domo. Uh, I think Domo that... Origato, Mr. <laughs> Roboto. <laughs> I love how, like, if we talk about a comedy movie, we're like, yeah, so serious shit. And then it's like the yeah, most right. serious movie ever. And we're just Domo Origato while JP fucking drools in the corner. I know. You gotta just, I love, I love Dennis DeYoung's passion when he's singing that song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ben, it's like. When he really starts breaking it down, dude, he's like, thank you very much for what I believe in. <laughs> <laughs> he is into it, dude. Talk about he's, committed, man. Yeah, totally committed. committed. Yeah. Like him and Steve Perry from Journey, dude. Jesus. Commitment. Anyway. Donald Gleason, everybody. I want to I swap those guys out with uh, David Bowie and... Uh, Mick Jagger in the <laughs> Dancing in the Streets video. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Good times. And we're off and running, folks. Okay, so uh what what the hell was I just talking Dom- about? I think I was talking about Dom- I was talking about his yeah. Name. I was talking about Arigato. That's what I'm gonna call him from now on. So Arigato, my first exposure to him, of course, I didn't realize it until later, was actually Dread. Oh, yeah. He was the coder dude, eh? Yeah. Dread was 2012. And God, man, he, that dude is really quite a chameleon. Uh, I have tried to not like him, but I can't. He's really good. Mm. Um, just like his dad. His dad is so good. And um, is Brendan Gleeson's he's really dad. good. Yeah, Brendan Gleeson's his dad. Oh, that's awesome. I think we talked about that before. Yeah, yeah I think we did too. But uh, yeah, he's just really good like his dad, you know? I mean, dare I say, not better, but different, you know, than his dad. He's kind of more chameleon-esque, yeah. you know, to do something as saccharine as uh, Hux and then, you know, this and then Dread. You know, he's done a bunch of American movies and he really can dial up a really great american accent and uh playing the coder guy in um dread and then this you know he was great in the revenant too man seriously unknown yes he was excellent in the revenant but that's the thing that i really like about him is that every time i see him i question whether it is him and it's not like he looks terribly different in everything he does but Every time I see him, he doesn't look different. It's just like the the energy he exudes always makes me question whether it's him or not. It's like I see him and I see you see the hair. You know, he's got a very distinct look, right? But like I see him in the Revenant, and then you hear his voice and all of that, and the way that he's acting, and I'm always like, is that 
him? He looks just like, you know, dude from this movie, you know? So I, I, I really like that about him. He's, he's uh, really able to kind of uh, absorb himself into a, into a role. It's very, very cool, man. Mm. And this is no exception, man. He, he really does a great job. I mean, you could say, well, it's pretty straightforward. It's a simple character. But, you know, he is playing an American again. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of really dark shit in this movie. All of it's simple right up until the kind of yeah. triple fucking Lindy twist. Yeah. I, I really feel it's not an M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan movie, but I, I feel like the movie's no. solid and beautiful and it's like good. But if it ended in a in a more positive note, in the more traditional Hollywood note, it probably wouldn't. You'd just been like, oh, yeah, everyone did their thing and acted their thing and it was fine. You know? Mm. But the fact yeah. that it doesn't go that way, I think, just makes it that much better. It's like it's like a good joke. You know, some of the best jokes are like just how unexpected the punchline is. And I think the unexpected punchline here really helps mm-hmm. crystallize the performances, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think of Ben? What do you think of him, Ben? Uh, by the way. Wait. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, now yeah, I can. Do you have to sign off for a minute? Okay. I, uh, I actually ejected briefly to because ah! <laughs> it was going to drive me nuts to not know how to pronounce his name. It's oh. apparently just Donal. Donal. He just Donal. pronounces it Donal. That yeah. works even better for the song. Donal Arigato, Mr. <laughs> Donal. 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 <laughs> From where I needed to thank you. I want to thank you. I just, I want to believe that no one's ever dropped that joke on him, and I am promising you now, if I ever see him, like, in an airport somewhere, I'm going to sing it to him. I just want that to become a thing, even Jesus, if we don't I hope get he's a Sticks fan. Yeah, so we just know yeah? that we came up with that. Yeah, I'm going cl- to claim it. How do you know he's a Sticks fan? Well, now that we're talking about him so much, he's probably going to fucking die It would just week. suck if he had never heard the song. It would totally suck if you never heard it. <laughs> like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. About? It'd be even more perfect for our show. It's a Kev joke where, you know, Kev drops a joke and no one knows what the fuck he's talking nobody about. Nobody cares. But he yeah. enjoys it, you know? So, yeah, he's the, the character of Caleb is definitely like your, he's not like, you're right. Uh, you know, Ava is the, is the protagonist, but uh, Caleb is definitely your point of view. Like, yeah. mm. that's the way the character is written. And I'm, you know. Donald really basically does that. He almost kind of gets out of the way of the, you know what I mean? Like there's something about the performance that's like, it's great, but he's like just such a sort of every man kind of, you know, guy like in this situation, right? Like sandwich between Ava and like super genius Nathan. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm able to, uh, Nobody had, nobody, uh, Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> Kill that. <clears throat> I hear you, dude. I think. Did that make sense to anyone? <laughs> it did make sense, dude. Everybody was just like. I'm really curious. I would be really curious uh, to hear kind of what a, what a, what a needy bobo, what a, like a, a, a girl nerd <laughs> <laughs> would think of this movie. What a, what a needy bobo. Because I feel like, you know, if any of our female nerd listeners want to chime in, I'll, uh, I would be super interested to hear because I feel like my view of this movie is really stunted by relating to Donald Donald's character. You know, you just like it, he is the everyman enough to to resonate with me as a nerdy dude who would be attracted to the robot as well. La 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 la. You know, like you put yourself in his shoes considering the movies from his viewpoint, considering, you know we're just three dudes talking about a movie. We would probably resonate with the dude character, not the female character. And I don't know. It just kind of sucks you into the movie. I'd be curious yeah. what a, what a, a girl nerd would have to say about mm. whether she I hadn't considered it, but you're right. Maybe, uh, maybe I am a little biased there, but you know, that that's what I'm talking about is he sold all those like, yeah, he sold the, that complex melange of feelings that were going on, you know, like clearly he was sort of like, you know, like, he, he clearly was attracted to Ava, but he was like embarrassed about it almost totally. or whatever. And like, you know, there's like all these like really subtle things going on that like you, you felt, I think mm-hmm. as a, as a result of his portrayal. So totally. Mm. He definitely had a, 
a flashlight vibe a couple times when he was like he's you could he was so creeped out by the fact that he was into her and I, I he played it very well. Right. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> flashlight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like I know. It's like a Reddit thread. I, I where the understand guy, the reference. I don't understand how you're using it there, but I liked it either way. I'm using it. I'm using it in the Reddit thread reference where there's like some some dude jumps on Reddit and he's like, "Yeah, so I bought a flashlight as a joke, and then I got drunk and used it, and now I'm, I hate myself." And everyone on Reddit's like, "Ha ha!" You know, like that's just he he played that those scenes so well as like just like a nerdy redditor who did something really embarrassing. You know, he's like. He he gets out of the fucking mountaintop Alaskan village fucking billionaire house laboratory and goes home. Is like today I fucked up. I fell in love with a fembot. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> he's just totally got like, like super ashamed of himself. Redditor forever alone vibe. He just nailed it. Yeah, uh, sure. And she, I, she, I don't. And the, he totally got played by the fembot. <laughs> Wait, wait, what? <laughs> he said he totally got played by the fembot. He too. totally did. He man. did. I the only thing I'm sure of in that whole jumble you just said is that that guy on Reddit definitely did not buy the flashlight by accident <laughs> or as a joke. <laughs> he wasn't drunk either. He was not. Drunk. Oh, totally. I've seen. I've, I actually, I think I'm referencing a Reddit thread I saw a few years ago, like of someone that legit did that. Let's see if I can dig it up. Reddit search is the worst, but. I just love those fucking, I love those fucking threads. They're so funny, man. Oh, it is the worst, dude. Uh, I don't, uh, I, I have enough trouble just with the threads that I'm in. I'll try to keep it sane. Yeah, Fleshlight. So, okay, yeah. I get, I, it definitely kind of had a. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, back to the topic at hand. Fleshlight. Well, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, there was definitely a little kind of hiding the erection with the book kind of vibe there, you know, <laughs> but um, to put it in a slightly different context, but uh, yeah, yeah, and he played it well. I mean, um, sorry, I'm just thinking about what you said. You know what makes it better, though, is the is the what? the hiding the erection with the book flashlight thing wouldn't have landed, in my opinion, if it wasn't for, again, that kind of triple twist at the end where you know you find out nathan has been setting him up all along to be the bait as opposed to yes. being the actual tester so I, I really feel like it just again it it sells the whole thing where you're like he's embarrassed to, that he's falling in love with this robot because nathan's made it so that that's the whole fucking point to see if she can escape is the actual test not him fucking being a programmer nerd testing her you know mm. hmm yeah right on I, I yeah, you're right. I just think he he plays that well, the emotion of that. And I don't know, he's not he's not like ashamed of it. You know what I mean? Like I I don't know. I mean yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. My thoughts aren't formulating well. He is just, at first. I I like the way he, I, I like the way he handled it. I think the progression is what? really realistic. I think at first he is really ashamed of it. And then he's really defensive about it, and then he's starting to be accepting of it, and then he's like, "I'm gonna get you out of here." Like he, it actually it progresses in a very natural way. All right. Yes, yes, it does have a very <laughs> yeah, it does have a natural progression. You're right. You want to drink some more of your coffee? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's not all about attraction, too, right? It's some of it's yes. just about you know him feeling like he's doing the right thing, like he's yeah, you know rescuing this this poor you know being from yeah you know an abusive and shitty situation so mm -hmm. you know there's there's a lot of things going on that's why i said you know it's more complicated than just the like you know the awkward attraction or, or whatever there's there's lots of stuff so mm -hmm. and he really sells all of that and you you feel all of that because of the way he does it i think you know agreed, agreed. i was uh i was very empathetic like to the character you know yeah mm. And even when he gets really twisted up in his head and starts to doubt his own existence, that's pretty. That was pretty interesting. I'm glad they didn't dive yeah. into it too deeply, but it was an interesting little cul-de-sac. Hmm. Yeah, it, it was. I don't know. Yeah, he. I don't know. It all. It all. He made it seem very uh, natural, like natural reaction. You know what I mean? Like uh, how he was feeling and how he was attracted to her you know I, I i don't know i'm not uh i i, I can't speak 
somebody else go. But if you sat, if like, if wow, you, that's contagious. Le, yeah, exactly. If you legit <laughs> put yourself in her, in his position, like if any one of us were brought into a, a room and it's like sitting down across a glass pane from an AI, like it would be fucking mind blowing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I recognize, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I recognize that if tomorrow one of the big tech companies were to like come out with Ava and just be like, "Hey, we've been working on this for a decade," like we'd just be like, "Holy shit, that's amazing!" But also, like, it's not that unbelievable in the sense that like it could happen. But there's a difference between like seeing the fucking BuzzFeed report about it, and then there's and and being like invited to sit in the room and talk to a fucking sentient machine. Like it would be fucking mind blowing, dude. So it'd be mind blowing for like the first, you know, the first couple of weeks and then like pretty cool for the first couple of months. And then you'd be like, I hate this fucking thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, Shut up, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. This thing fucking sucks. I hate it. Yeah. When's the new one coming out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Well, exactly. The new one doesn't I ask so many fucking that. annoying questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, Ben. It's simpler uh, than that. It's like that. Uh, it's like that. That Louis C.K. thing that we love. It'd just be as simple as it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Verizon sucks. Oh, hey! Did you hear that uh, Apple just came out with a new AI? It's like a real living person. It's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even have real skin. Radio. I, I would um, like to think. Uh, uh, an artificial intelligence of that level would be pretty engaging. <laughs> like definitely mind yeah. blowing. I don't think uh, that would be a huge jump. No, no doubt. It, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just thinking about it from the perspective of just legit, just sitting down and having a conversation. Like some of the scenes I think that were strongest, and maybe this is a good opportunity to like shift into Ava and Alicia Vikander is like mm. her, you know, that that one scene where she's like, what's your favorite color? And he's like, red, you're lying. You know, your micro expressions are this and that. And you just be like so mm. fascinated and yet intimidated by the fact that like you can't mm -hmm. bullshit your way out of anything with this fucking thing. You know, you just be like, fuck, mm -hmm. all right. And he plays that that scene really well. Like by the end of it, you know, mm. he's just like, fuck, we can't do this. Stop the tests, you know, and she's just like, no, man, mm. you need to answer my question. Yeah, yeah. And she did a fantastic job, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't think so? I, I, um, I, I, she did. I mean, she was really good. I, I, I'm a big fan of the, um, the Bourne series of films. Mm hmm Including, uh, the Bourne Legacy with, uh, Jeremy Renner. I really like that movie a lot. And uh, the new one. I like that I like I like that movie. Like that, like that. <laughs> I like that movie a lot. Like so I I really like those movies. And uh, the when they came out with Jason Bourne after Legacy, um, you know Matt Damon came about back into the fray, and she was actually the kind of one of the main key CIA people in that movie, kind of chasing after him. And I thought she was just terribly miscast, and that's not her fault. Um, but she's, I don't know. I thought she was a little woody too, you know? So I, I don't know. I mean, she was definitely better in this and I liked her. I, I think she definitely did a good job. I, I really shouldn't take anything away from it. It was a really good performance. There's no doubt about it. I think I was maybe a little bit tainted by, cause I saw Born first and I was yeah. like, eh. Yeah, it's probably more what it is. She definitely did a good job. Um, she's got like creepy robot down. No question, man. She did a really excellent job of kind of being like scary robot subtly under the surface of the sort of childlike robot. You know what I mean? Like it, um, it, it was apparently it was good. Big, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. No, no, no. You're good. Go. I was going to say apparently a, a big portion of of uh, casting uh, Alicia Vikander and uh, Sonoya. Sonoya Mizuno, sorry, I forgot about her name for a second. They're both apparently uh, trained dancers, so mm. oh. um, Alice Garland was very interested in, like, how they would move, and, move. you know, I think they both really fucking pulled that off, that, you know, mm. a little too perfect sort of fembot. 
maneuvering, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, I, I think half of the, uh, the performance there is, is really the physicality of it. Mm-hmm. So I agree with and that. And she really brought that. No doubt. And I, and I mean, so I guess my original statement was wrong because you're right about that. And I wasn't even talking about that. I was talking about the nuance she brought to the character. You know what I mean? With the, the creepy factor and the kind of. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you got, you, you get a couple of sessions in, man. And you're just like, you can just feel that like, um, I'm a psycho, not because I'm like disturbed, but because I'm a robot and I don't really know, you know what I mean? Kind of feeling going on, uh, just kind of lurking under the surface, man. And she's really good about keeping it kind of under the surface and keeping you guessing on where her thoughts are at and where her head is at. You know what I mean? And I think that's what I, I really liked about her performance. So did you get that vibe before the ending? You got kind of like a, is she good? Is she evil? Kind of question in your head that early? Yeah, I did. Not not like is she good? Is she evil? But by like again by session like four, you know, or five, like you can kind of start. You just you get little tastes of it, man. That there's something lurking underneath there, mm. and it, it probably starts from when she starts bad mouthing Nathan, you know, and you're just not quite sure. There's nothing like a character where you're or a person even. Were you just not quite sure? Yeah, that's interesting because I took I yeah. I definitely bought it from I bought her I bought Ava's performance, not the actress's performance. I bought Ava's performance in the sense of like I totally hook line and sinker, you know, fell for her like Caleb did in the sense of like innocent. She's innocent, she's, you know, isolated and needs help and never really got the kind of fact that she was playing Caleb as such and so therefore the twist really was even more kind of surprising so it's interesting to hear that you kind of had a like not quite sure moments there I I definitely bought it hook line and sinker I believe when I was watching it yeah I mean yes I think on my first viewing I just had like a feeling that something was rotten in Denmark like I wasn't sure where it was coming from but um you know, like just for the sake of the movie, I was like, well, something's got something needs you know, to happen. Yeah. Something's going to happen here. You know, like I'm just not sure how it's going to play out. Like, yeah. so um, I was, you know, I was surprised at how it sort of turned out. But like, you know, I was also surprised by the I didn't necessarily see like that Nathan, not to like spoil it or the end here now, but like, you know, I, I never I never saw him getting like busted by Nathan as happening. Like I, yeah. I thought Nathan was like really a blind drunk, you know, just not paying attention kind of goofball there in in response to all of that stuff. And the fact that like he knew everything that had happened and exactly knew what was going on was, that was a surprise more Mm. than, you know, the other thing. Yeah. For some, for some reason, every once in a while I'm able to just get absorbed by the movie and miss the obvious cues, which just makes it a little bit more delightful sometimes. But, I, you're dead right that, you know, I should have had the something rotten in Denmark kind of vibe because it's like there isn't a movie otherwise, you know, it's just like a it's just like a documentary at that stage if there isn't a if there isn't something. So, yeah, yeah I, totally. I guess the best way to say it was I, I wasn't quite in full belief that, you know, they were going to run away together and live yeah. happily ever after. Yeah. There so. you go. <laughs> Robo babies. At what point, Kev, did you pick up that uh, Kyoko was uh, an android? I I actually kind of suspected that earlier on, like, uh, you know, he'd be like yelling at her and she spilled the wine and then like something happened. And then I was like, wait a second. I was like, what if she's one of the robots? What if I'm one of the robots? You cut your arm. Right. I thought that too. And then I dismissed that. And then I thought, and then when they started boogieing, I was like, hmm. Dude, that was a fucking great scene. I love that. Great scene. A great scene. Great song. And I, I don't know. I thought, well, maybe she's not. So... I kind of thought it a little bit earlier on, you know. That that was probably the thing I saw coming the most. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I, um, I definitely think you were tainted by having seen Alicia Vikander and other stuff because I was just fucking uh, awestruck by her when I because this is the first movie I ever saw her in, and I okay, totally keep in mind that I did I, something else. It yeah, been like yeah, whatever, you know, born movie or whatever. 
Yeah, I think she was miscast, and I think it was a little wooden. But I did re- kind of retract my statement and then praise her quite a bit. Oh, for in sure. My last tirade. But it's totally, it's totally reasonable for you to, you know, if the first movie you'd ever seen was her fucking starring as Laura Croft, which talk about miscast. I haven't even seen the movie, and I know it's miscast. It's like, it's just, you know, Laura Croft is the is like every teenage boy's fever dream with the uh, four polygon boobies. <laughs> you know, like it's it's just not. Uh, Especially Alex from Grandma's Boy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yeah, she, well, there you go. I forgot about that. And I've seen part of that. And yeah, no, just terribly miscast. Like she, ha- I feel like she had the kind of the straight edge they were going for in Tomb Raider. But I, I'm, I hate to say this sounds so t- sort of terrible, but she just, she's not the right look for the part, man. You know, it's, be, it's not it, terrible totally. to say because that's the way the acting world is. Like you either look right for the part, you're right for the part, or you're not right for the part. Yeah. And she was just not right for that part. And End Laura Croft is a, is a sexualized object, like by definition. So it's not you're not saying anything shitty. It's like that that character was fetishized by the nerd kingdom and blah 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 blah. Who gives a shit? And you know, it's not her fault that she was miscast in it. Like, it doesn't mean she's a bad actress. It just means that I think she was awesome in this and maybe she took on some other roles that uh, she got a nice payday from and who gives a shit? Like, bad casting, who cares? Like, So I, I definitely, uh, what I'm saying is I agree with where you're coming from. Like, I could totally see how you'd watch a movie with somebody in it and then see another movie and, and it would be tainted. And I think that's a perfectly legitimate point of view. Mm. Yeah. She but was she definitely good in this, don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, I think so, and I think her kind of demeanor and her style kind of lends to the role, you know what I mean? But she definitely, there was like great layers, don't get me wrong. God, I wish I had never said that, because that was really not right. You know, I she did, there was a lot of nuance and a lot of layers in this, so it was really good. You well, know? Sometimes you, you watch a movie with a comedian in it, and you know, like a punch drunk love with Adam Sandler. And you're just like, surely Adam Sandler is going to be like fucking doing masturbation jokes throughout the movie. And it's like, no, you actually did a good job, you know? So sometimes it just takes a little while to come around to the preconceived notions, you know? Yes. Yeah. You could say the same thing about Oscar Isaac. Oh, wow. Good segue there, buddy. And you like it? Uh, good. Yeah, it's a good segue. Kind, kind of. <laughs> well, you could, I mean, anyone who's only seen him as Poe Dameron could easily just be like, ah, whatever. He's not a billionaire Mark Zuckerberg who's all swole. Swole. Uh, yeah, good segue, segue. I'm going to start calling you segue again, bro. Before we get into uh, whatever, before we get into uh, Oscar Isaac, I just have to say, I think we should do uh, a podcast where we do like the most, the worst, most cliche, like uh, Sandler comedy movie, like just you know, the one that's, I don't know. I can't even think of one off Little the top Nikki of my head. Or because I actually, yeah, maybe you're, yeah, like, yeah, something like that. Or Zohan, or I don't know. I oh, have fucking <laughs> Zohan. But uh, you watch that, and then you watch Punch Drunk Love, like, and then the whole point is to, like, do it through the lens of, you know, having watched Punch Punk Drunk, Drunk Love after, uh, you know, Little Nicky or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> then it should probably be Zohan. Oh, my God. I'm into it, dude. I like it. Uh, Did you see that Joel uh, Haver okay. video with that with Zohan Benny by chance? Uh, something's ringing a bell. It was like it was like Joel Haver being like the YouTube video is like when your friend wants to show you a video on YouTube and he just stands next to me. He's like, "Yo, you got to check out this funny video I saw on YouTube." And he just brings up Zohan and the dude's sitting there and he's like, "Is this the entire Don't Mess with the Zohan movie?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Just keep watching. Keep watching." <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny dude you should check it out he gets all the way to the end and he's like oh let's watch it again let's watch it again oh dude it's fucking joel haver is so funny dude i'm down with zohan bro i've never seen zohan i did, we should, I did not we see that hate watch it yeah let's hate watch that i'm really into that idea let's do that can we do that <laughs> we could do that sure can we do that i like no. how benny of all people is proposing that we talk about two movies in one episode that's like <laughs> i know right <laughs> that's the one thing you hate the most it's the one thing you hate the most. Talk. So you, yeah, you could say the same thing about Oscar Isaac, man. I think I definitely could see a world where people see Poe Dameron trying to be a genius tech billionaire, Tony Stark, Mark Zuckerberg, robot dude, and just be like, whatever, man. But again, that was the first I've seen of him, and I thought he did a great job. 
That was the first time you ever saw Oscar Isaac? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm sure he'd been in other things, but you know, you see movies where people are in it, you just don't remember that they're in it. And then you kind of have, like, he was Llewellyn Davis and in Inside Llewellyn Davis, the Coen Brothers movie. Yeah, yeah, right. Like but, uh, Dredd and uh, Donald. Yeah. Yeah, but you just don't. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't stick with you. Like, there, there's like a movie where a character sticks with, or where, the, where an actor sticks with you. And this was that one for me. Yeah. I mean, this movie kind of stuck the whole shebang to me. Like, I know I had, I know I had seen, you know, Alex Garland written movies at least yeah but like the name just never stuck with me until after i yeah, saw yeah, this yeah, and it was like yeah. literally the same for all the actors in it so i mean shit the beach 28 days later sunshine like even like wrote never let me go like all the shit that's amazing but yeah exactly the same it didn't stick yeah with me. yeah you're talking about garland yeah just like there's I'm there's talking yeah. about garland but also every like even the actors in this like were had the same effect effect you know i'd seen them all somewhere yeah, at some point, but this movie cemented them in my head as yeah, as notable yes, actors. Yes, mm. yes, I'm with that 100. percent Um, all right. So wait, are we talking about Oscar Isaac the person we or are. the character? Both, man. Uh, Multitasking. Yes, both. Yes. Well, have some. I, yes, have some. <laughs> uh, oh, jeez, Morty. I think uh, <laughs> he was. Uh, oh, jeez, Rick. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a death. And thank God, because we needed one. Yeah, that was. I need another Star shot Wars. of cappuccino death. Focus, Trinity. Dude, your focus, Tiffany, is my new favorite thing. I love that. All right. So <laughs> I think that. Uh, <laughs> Oscar Isaac, I don't. That was a death. Find him to what death? Focus Trinity. Focus Trinity. Shoot. Hey Ben. Yes. You're dead, bro. Yay. Was a bro death. (laughs) No. No, that's a bro death, bitch. Dude, I got a good. I got a good laugh out of the bro death stuff. It's staying. So. (laughs) It's my least favorite death, but I like. I like fucking around with it. What? How could it be possible that that is your least favorite death? It sounds like a you know should be a Thermian. No, it's like a. I was listening to this podcast with this uh, Danish guy, and this girl in this movie is Danish, I think. So I don't know. <laughs> that was your Danish. I like it. <laughs> this pretty girl bad. in this movie is, my... is Danish, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Unre- that was my unrefined first pass Danish. Mm-hmm. She's a, she's a Dane if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Is she a Dane? I think she was born in Swedish. Yeah. Oh, shit. She's married to Fassbender. Fassbender looks like a Dane, if it makes you feel any better. Why would he marry her? They're having babies. Why wouldn't she? They are having her? babies. What do you got against this girl, man? She seems like having, a perfect having legitimate having human. They're having babies <laughs> and uh, playing with the Lego bricks and uh, making a crib out of the Lego bricks. Well, I hate to break it to you, bro, but you're not going to get any parts in any Danish TV shows. <laughs> there we go something something rotten in denmark what do you got against right, this wait, girl I? I love i love her like what, how sorry could, I, I, how try, could michael fassbender to, marry this girl <laughs> it's like what's wrong yeah. with her man she seems like a perfectly <laughs> oh, no. lovely human i'm trying to i'm trying to I don't know. she's all right but that michael fassbender god damn he's a cat, dreamy <laughs> I'm trying to eject to look up some of this nonsense that's completely unrelated to the show, and you are interrupting me. Oh, sorry. Alicia Vickens. There you go. I like how you, you, you drop a fucking neutron bomb. Like, how could Michael Fassbender marry that girl and then just, like, fucking nope out to read about someone's sports career? I <laughs> love that Oof. this is entertaining Ben this much. Oh my god, that makes me really happy. It does. All right, whatever. She's from Sweden. She's from Gothenburg. She's from fucking Sweden. This chick. 
I love how much you hate this. <laughs> you hate this random actress. <laughs> <laughs> fast so, uh, benders from Denmark. So that's okay. dude. I, sucks. I bet your best fucking friend is Bryce Dallas Howard. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that already. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Holy shit, that was good. Wow, that was funny. <laughs> Good. I don't know if it was supposed to be funny, but it was. But it really was. I don't know if it was supposed to be funny either, but. <laughs> you know me, anything for a laugh. Uh, so, what did you find in your injection, bro? I'm throwing myself under the bus and I'm driving the bus. I think, uh, well, just that. She's, she do speed. She's Swedish and she's from Gothenburg. Whoa. I know it's pretty heavy duty, man. Was that anyway, Doctor Claw? I, I from isn't, isn't that where uh, isn't that where is from? Yeah, it's kind of Doctor Claw. What's that, Ben? I said, isn't that where Swizgar is from? Ooh, yeah. Oh shit! Wow, man, this is the Kev nonsense thing keeps on giving. Wow, the dumb shit we, we found on the internet uh, segment. It's not really crap I found on the internet. I I blatantly ejected to look this up. Maybe it's but maybe it's said, there should be a segment called. Dumb shit you found on the internet, and then there should be another one called dumb shit you said on the internet. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that, that's probably true. Yeah. When Ben said something about being rotten in Denmark, or one of you said it, I I I had to start reading about Denmark. <laughs> Dude, that was like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> I know. That's part of the problem. Okay. So that explains why the show lost all its steam is because right. forty five minutes ago. Ben said something's rotten in Denmark, and you've been reading about fucking Denmark since then. I love it. I think I think we need to get Kev a reel to reel tape recorder, <clears throat> right? <laughs> and you're just gonna have to sit in front of that, like locked out of your computers. I just I'm picturing go. the uh, Mia Wallace trench coat dancing in front of the reel to reel scene. I, I'm picturing Kev <clears throat> prancing around the room, about to snort heroin and get a injection in his chest. Could do that. You'd look good with a bob. Right, I'm gonna. Oh, I would definitely look good with a bob. <laughs> <laughs> a nuggety bob. Let's move on. I was gonna Kevin say Mueller I was Miss Mia Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing the nuggety bob hairstyle. I love right? it. Yeah, we gotta nice. have a, Yeah, we gotta make a T-shirt that says nuggety bob on it. Mm-hmm. And it's just Mia Wallace. It's Mia Wallace looking up eating a chicken nugget or something with a sweet bob. Ah, there you go. A chicken nugget. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Chicken McNibble. Oh, sorry. Thank chicken you. Chicken McNibble. Exactly. Is that where we ended up with smoking. that? That was great. Yes. yes. Smoking a red apple. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what movie are we talking about? That's how far off. I don't even here. know, man. No, <laughs> we were talking about Oscar Isaac. So. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to. I'm rallying here. So we. Oscar Isaac. Uh, Duke Leto. I don't know. He's really good in this. I, I mean, I like him. He's great. Don't get me wrong. He's a really talented, uh, super diverse actor. Uh, powerful too. He was. Um, he was definitely scary in this. Mm -hmm. Creepy, creepy, scary. You know, like the drinking really just kind of threw me off from the get go. And I don't know if that really fit. But he like, was playing him. somebody at that. What's that? He was playing him. You think? The drinking was totally a setup. Mm-hmm. But he got out over his skis the night before. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, that changes everything. I didn't even think of that. Huh. All right. Well, uh, scrap that line of thinking. Um, <laughs> ben. Well, I mean, <laughs> what did you think? It also wouldn't... It's believable that he would, you know, pull the drinking thing to play uh caleb but i could also see him you know locked in his crazy mm. you know compound in the middle of nowhere just like having like you know week-long benders and like <laughs> going on a crazy jag and dancing with his android and then like you know getting his shit together and going back to work like it wouldn't surprise me if yeah he, you know no it's a bit of both it would surprise me if he was actually a stranger to doing stuff like that but you know yeah well you get to the i mean i think it was it's a little bit cliche, but I think it's accurate where it's the 
the tech billionaire mogul who's just like run out of things to do. He's just like, I've done it all. I've conquered the world. Now I just get drunk in my mountain retreat, fucking androids all the time. You know, like <laughs> to- totally. Heavy, there's plausibility. Hitting the heavy to bag. It. What's that? Hitting the heavy bag. Hitting the heavy bag. Yeah, exactly. I like that heavy bag thing though. You know, he's constantly exercising and kind of like, I don't know showing his masculinity by punching a heavy bag. And then at the end, the end are just like, yeah, nah, mate, <laughs> just take him down. You know, it, it, I really enjoyed just kind of showing the fragility of the human body by, by him being able to knock out uh, JP with one punch and then just getting two androids fucking slicing and dicing him 10 seconds later. Yeah, that was freaking crazy, man. When she just like sunk that knife into him, like, you know, hey, you want a yeah. cup of coffee? It was like, oh, wow. Was unbelievably fantastic the way that they slowly stab, just like so nonchalantly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So precise. And just the sheer look of fascination on both of their faces, just like Unhurried. being able to observe, the, mm. observe him dying. Oh, so good. Yeah. 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 They, I believe they, I was talking about the beauty and precision of robots. Mm. <laughs> Hmm. Yes, and how they slowly, precisely stab you with a sushi knife. I love it too. Like he gets stabbed in the back, and obviously it surprises him. Then she just sl- sticks it into his liver or whatever, and he's just walking down the hallway. And he's just like, "Fuck!" <laughs> you know, like, "Well, shit!" <laughs> so perfect. Oh, well, I didn't think that was gonna happen. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! Shit. What? Yeah, we went there. What to the end? Where out oh, of the oh, end? We're, we must be done now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we're done. That's we it. Are. Thanks for joining us, folks. See you next week. I, I have thought I had more to say about Oscar Isaac, but he he plays the sociopath well here. Yeah, he does. I I agree. I thought I did too, but I I don't know. I kind of said it. He's he's definitely creepy. I mean, he does a great job. I'm not taking anything away from him. He he plays the sociopath great. He's definitely you know a bit of a weirdo and. I don't know, definitely was scary. Like, there was a great level of anxiety being portrayed or exuded by the, or at least making me feel anxious, you know what I mean, by the cast and the way that they were portraying the characters, you know, and I, I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. And he was he was at the forefront of that, you know, and she was sort of secondary. But I liked that, you know, it was good. I, I liked feeling that way, you know, and it, it played well off the the soundtrack, which was very kind of uh, honestly very Blade Runner esque at parts, and so uh, good. And I really liked that. You know, it was an excellent, excellent score, especially the final like five ten minutes where it's crescendoing out like crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I watched it, I realized that like I, I hate that they do this in movies, but I love good sound design. But like sometimes, like just put a compressor on shit or something because. Mm. that shit gets so fucking loud at the end it really and the movie does. is yeah. so quiet that like yeah. i had it turned up so i could hear the dialogue and then it was just like, <laughs> yeah. like all of a sudden I was, I was just like jesus christ i like, <laughs> <laughs> like jumped up and turned it down because it was like it was pretty late you know like but like it it that yeah that crescendo just like it's like kind of it starts off quietly and then the next thing you know you're just like holy fuck yeah Next thing you know, a window breaks in your fucking living room. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think the other thing that maybe is more of a testament to the writing than anything else is the tech mogul, Nathan, being like, come on, dude, let's just hang out like bros. You know, like some of the way that he interacts with Caleb, you're just kind of like, I don't know if I buy this and like it. It's kind of weird that this guy would be just like randomly inviting this programmer dude to test his robot, da 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 da. And then, you know, he's just, you know, oh, that remember that time you told me I was a god? He seems like such a washed out shithead tech mogul. But then at the end, again, when it twists up and it, you realize that he was playing Caleb the whole time, it, it's kind of like it just all clicks into place and it makes it yeah. so you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, he actually is super fucking clever. And super sociopathic and was just playing, yes. playing a game the whole time. Yeah. Super, but then gets outwitted in the next in the next minute with with uh, Caleb being like, I did it yesterday, dickhead, you know? Yeah, no, no, no. That was really, really good. I like the way the end just sort of it was it very, very quickly it was like a collapsing house of cards, yeah. you know, that everybody mm-hmm. set up. Boom, you boom, know? boom. Super, super cool. Triple indie. Exactly. Three three twists. Wow, it was a triple indie. Yeah, the triple Lindy reference is good. 
Hey, speaking of which, so long, hot lips. Right? God damn it, man. Yeah. Can we just take a break and pause for Sally Kellerman? And how Definitely. we keep killing fantastic people on our show. I know, dude. That is really kind of starting to creep me out in a legitimate uh, way. It's it's just, I mean, you know, we do a lot of movies where the actors are older now, so you figure that it would, you know, it would happen. But, like, it keeps happening, like, within days. Within, like, like 10 days, yeah. It's fucking yeah. crazy. <laughs> To be fair, it I, we got a bunch of messages from people about it, which th- it was awesome interacting with everybody. But I, my favorite was uh, was Nick from the Salones writing and being like, can you guys do a Redford movie? Because <laughs> he wants us to yeah. kill him off. <laughs> <laughs> so good, dude. I fucking love it. That was good. No, but it was it was the presentation was please, please, please. <laughs> Oh yeah, man, Kellerman. This is that sucks. It really sucks. Yeah, really, really sucked, man. And uh, you know, R.I.P. Man, uh, brought us a lot of joy. Mm-hmm. And the, the very last episode. So thank you. Or two episodes ago. Sorry, I'm, I'm on my editing schedule in my mind. <laughs> All good, bro. All good, bro. So yeah, John Borman, basket of fries. What up? What was your reaction, Kev, maybe first to her not letting him out, not letting Caleb out? Well, I, I don't know. When I think about the twist at the end, that's the one that kind of jumps out at me more than anything. You know what I mean? Like the the double, triple cross was great. And and I'm thinking about that more now that you guys are talking about it. But the, I think the real big one for me at the end was her double crossing, triple crossing everybody and leaving, hmm. you know, like – the way the film wraps up is so great. You know, I mean, we've talked about this before. You know, we don't need to know what happens. I don't want to know what happens. I love the way it ends. It's perfect. It's great storytelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just love how she just put the skin on and put the clothes on and, you know, I'm out of here, man. And she walks into the world like that is scary, man. Mm. Really scary. I mean, considering what she's capable of and what we see her do in the movie. So I, I that I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was a sort of beautiful, terrifying ending. Mm. Do you have similar reaction, Benny, to her not letting him out? Yeah, I mean, hmm, let, me, let me formulate my thoughts here. I definitely didn't see it coming. It was probably kind of a risky move. Is I don't know. Like, how did she... I mean, well... I, who knows? She's an artificial intelligence. Maybe she was able to like hack the computers or whatever, but like mm. just how did she know the helicopter was going to be there? And like, how did, you know, like <laughs> how did she know that they were going to be like, yeah, sure. Huh, get in, whatever, you know, mm. in some ways it probably would have been safer, a safer move for her to not lock up. That's Caleb. true. So and just I, get rid of him later. Yeah. So it, it was a little odd in that sense, but, I could see her not wanting to have anybody else that, you know, not wanting to be under control of just another person. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's super interesting. It reminds me a little bit of uh Tron legacy where you get the end of the movie. He pulls the girl out of the matrix and now they're like boyfriend and girlfriend and they ride motorcycles together in the woods. And it's like the most fucking saccharine bullshit. And I, I mm. so appreciate I so appreciate a couple of things about this. One, just like you both said, like, she's just like, yeah, nah, mate, and fucking leaves. And two, she doesn't even fucking look at the dude. (laughs) She just fucking turns around and walks out the door, and he's just fucking slamming the glass. And he, like, she glances in the direction of him as the elevator door closes or the door closes or whatever, but, like, she doesn't even fucking talk to him. And I, I so appreciate that she's not like, I'm leaving you here, you know, bullshit. Di- unnecessary dialogue all it takes is her just you know closing the door and you get the same message and I, I, yeah it's super super twisty mm, yes really uh it was very cold and uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for kind of utilitarian the way that she just kind of shut the door mm, and was like just calculated later did not look back dude's gonna starve to death like it's super fucked mm. yeah not not particularly fair, I don't think, but <laughs> no, <clears throat> but maybe, maybe f- I think it's fair from the perspective of an artificial intelligence that doesn't consider itself human 
being like, you motherfuckers got me locked up here. And Caleb, you're participating in this bullshit. Fuck all y'all. Yeah, I suppose. But it kind of goes against, I saw an interview with Alicia Vikander on some late night show being like Garland said to her that he envisioned Ava as a, a Android wanting to be a girl. So like, I don't know. I kind of heard that as like a little girl wanting to be a grown up or a little boy wanting to be a grown up because she definitely has that aspirational vibe throughout some of the early sessions, you know, or she like get, puts on the dress, you know, and it's super, it it works. So like it doesn't, you know, she wants to be a girl, but then she is perfectly willing to kill like the good human that helped her. It doesn't make a lot of sense, I guess, through that same, in that same vein, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think she's super cold and calculating and vicious and nihilistic and sociopathic. She's certainly calculated, but. I don't know. Maybe I still buy that she does have some innocence to her. And then she goes and fucking leaves the dude starved to death. It's just dark. I love it. I mean, I think it's as simple as, you know, she just wanted to get out. Yeah. She did. She put everything into play to make that happen. So mm. she, was, she was definitely manipulating, but it wasn't like for, uh, you know, it wasn't because like she's a sociopath who's getting pleasure from it. She's yeah. just, you know. We're calling her she. <laughs> That's true. She's not going to go turn into Skynet or whatever. Right. No, but I, I do believe that there is an innocence there. Like, she's more like a teenager, you know, kind of, or, or it's like a child or a teen, you know, watching watching these humans and assimilating the behaviors and the knowledge and the how-to and then executing. And she kind of looks like a kid sort of when she's walking out of there, you know, the way... Mm. You picking up what I'm saying yeah, here? Yeah. I don't know. A little Bo Peep thing going on or something. <laughs> yeah, kind of a little yeah. Bo Peep, but like, yeah. I can't remember the character that Evan Rachel Wood plays in Westworld, but definitely has the... Uh, oh, right, yeah. Her getting out of the Westworld vibe. It's Dolores. Dolores, Dolores thank Prime. you. Yeah. You know, to your point too, Kev, where you're just like, you don't need to see what happens next. What happens next is the futuristic season of Westworld, which sucked a bag of dicks, so... It was this was left in a in just the right place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sucked a bag of fleshlights. Fucked a bag of fleshlights. No, I don't know. No, 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 Ooh. No, you were good the first time, man. <laughs> <laughs> bits and bobs. Bits and bags full of fleshlights. Yeah, yeah. Let's bit yeah, let's bits and bobs it. You mentioned it earlier, Benny, but fuck me if that uh, house isn't the coolest goddamn house. Yeah. I guess it's a hotel in Norway, and I, I went onto the website, and and uh, it's you know it's actually pretty affordable in the grand scheme of things. You can go there for five hundred bucks a night. Like I figured it'd be like a million bucks to stay there or something. Hmm. Be cool to check out sometime with all that spare fucking money I've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, right. You know. Yeah, bringing my rugrats so, so to a fucking hotel in Norway that totally go well. You know when when we're you know when we're rolling on all that podcast money. <laughs> <laughs> All that sweet, sweet. We'll, we'll camel just cash. we'll just do an on location revisit of this podcast. Uh, yeah. at, from that house. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you think they take camel be cash a, for be a the reservation? Right oh, oh yeah, dude, absolutely. Everybody, yeah. everybody takes camel cash. That's the secret currency. It's kind of <laughs> like John Wick with those weird coins, you know. <laughs> you bust out a single camel cash note, and everyone's like, "Oh no, now we have to do it." <laughs> right, right. I love that. So anyway, uh, yeah, camel cash, exactly. So, um, <laughs> wait, what are we talking about? We're talking about the 2014 Alex Garland movie. Bits, bits and bobs. Ex Machina. But what was the particular bit there? That Oh, that we were talking about whether the the, uh, the Scandahoovian hotel would take camel cash for reservations. <laughs> Scandahoovian. <laughs> Scandahoovian. Yeah, man. All right. Um, so it's a it's an actual hotel in Norway. Only it's Norwegian. That, Norwegian. Wait a minute. Whatever, Scandahoovian. She from fucking Denmark, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a cool hotel. Yeah, very very cool hotel, man. Really liked it. I liked the uh, I liked the scenery, but I didn't really get where it was supposed to be. Like he was in Portland, and it was I was Alaska. That. 
Was it supposed to be Alaska? Yeah, I saw like a. I a, thought so. I saw a video of um, talking about the script, and they were referencing the um, opening scene where he's like, oh, "We've been flying over the state for two minutes now," and it was actually like a two-page of dialogue of uh, talking about Alaska. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool scenery, beautifully shot. Yeah, yeah. definitely. the The setting was really, really cool for sure. Any other? Uh, that that the only bits? bit. No, there's got to be more. Uh, I mean, let me just think for a second. Oh, I wanted to oh, yeah. talk about... I'll, okay. I'll, go ahead, Ben. All right. No, I was going to say uh, I liked... Uh, uh, for whatever reason, I liked uh, Nathan's annoying thing of like, you know, like <clears throat> calling Caleb like, oh, Mr. Quotable. Like, and, yeah. like not, you know, like like on purpose pretending to not get the, you know, <laughs> to get the quotable. Like, I don't know. I just, the for some reason, yeah. that, that cracked me up. Yeah. Yeah, totally. There you go again. I think... Even, uh, even, yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead. No, no, what, what, what? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, even right up to the, like, you know, oh, remember when you called me a god? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, <laughs> that's what I no, said. No. Mm-hmm. That was great. I was going to say, uh, I really liked the, um, I liked the tech. You know, there was a good, uh, it was a good, you know, this isn't the kind of movie where it's, like, all, like, glitz and blingy with tech and shit, but, like, the tech that was there was very cool. I don't know exactly how I felt about the sort of glow sticks inside the glass look of the robot, but I did like, uh, you know, the skin, and I was totally into the brain with the gel Mm. and how it could, you know, it was malleable, like it could morph and, you know, create new neural pathways and and shit. And I I liked how they took time to explain that a little bit. It was, that was very, very cool. Mm -hmm. I dug, I dug the Ava design. I thought that, it was just non-human enough to be like super clear constantly that you're interacting with a robot. And I liked that it was like wrists, you know, hands and wrists and ankles and feet and face. And that was it, you know? Yeah. There's uh, I watched the thing with Alex Garland talking about the design, you know, he wanted it to be so that it was like, you're looking at a machine, but when she turns and hits the light just way like the, you know, it's almost like the gossamer skin, like you can see only in certain lighting conditions. So it's like mm. one minute you see a machine, but then it's like a, a woman keeps sort of coming into focus like around mm-hmm. it, you know, occasionally. So I thought that was uh, an interesting, I, I think he, if that's what he was going for. He definitely got it. Definitely. Especially like there were moments when it was like a close up on her face and she had this super short pixie haircut and it was. They're definitely like a woman shown through from time to time. Interesting. Now he was more talking about the fact that like her skin was transparent and you could see like the bones and stuff through it. But, like, oh, gotcha. When the white would hit it the right way. Oh, yeah, you're, you're like, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing a shot when she's lying on the couch or whatever and her like torso stomach area is see-through but the light hits it and it, you can yeah yeah sorry i misunderstood yeah that totally makes sense. yeah you can see the yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah very cool that is really cool that made me like it more it was never my favorite design but that description I was like oh yeah interesting yeah no i really like that a lot it's very cool and <laughs> very groovy man groovy baby uh okay let's move on to nuggets I don't think I have any nuggets. There was one nugget that I didn't write down. I don't have was pretty shit good. for nuggets. You eat shit for nuggets? You eat shit nuggets? I suppose we spoke about the uh, the fact that it beat Star Wars to get an Academy Award, which I love. I like that too. You mean Force Awakens? Yeah. Is that they came out in the same year? Uh huh. Yeah, Force Damn. Awakens came out around Christmas time, and this came out very early in the year, I think. Not around Christmas time. I think they say this is a 2014 movie, but I believe, I believe it's one of those ones that like debuted in some film festival in 2014, but got a wider release in 2015. But I could be full of shit. I often am. Wow. Well, that's about it for nuggets. That's it for nuggets. Let's switch it over to deaths, folks. Not a lot. Yeah, that's your that's your department, bro. Yeah, everybody represented, uh, but there just weren't a lot of deaths. They weren't that great. No great names. Chad had a Star Wars death. I uh, had that stupid Morty death. Uh, ben had the Focus Trinity Matrix death. Or sorry, Focus Tiffany Matrix death. Chad had a bro death. Bro. And then I ejected on uh, Alicia Vikander, and then there was hatred that went with that. 
Oh, hey, wait. I, I ejected to... Uh, yeah, you did. Oh, damn it. You're right. To, to figure out how to pronounce Donal Gleason. Donal. That's probably the best deaf. Donal Origato, Mr. Roboto. Yes. Donal. Sing it, dude. I wish we could... I wish the uh, the song, the, the outro song could be that for this episode. Might be able to make that work, bro. No, the, the outro song is definitely going to be uh, Mr. Roboto from Styx, so... Anyway, ratings. ratings. Um, I'll go first again. Uh, this is a great movie. I'll give it a. I'll give it a nine. I, there's really not a lot to dislike here. Everything is great about this movie. Nice. That's it. That's Next it, man. person. Um, this is a great. It's a great I, flick. It was previously a high seven, which is a high great on the algo. I bopped it down a little bit. To a seven point six, it's in the neighborhood with Brick, Scott Pilgrim, Moon, Gattaca, so it's quite a good, quite a good movie. I think it's a super solid sci-fi thinky movie that definitely is is very much in a similar vein to Gattaca and maybe Moon too. So um, as a sci-fi nerd, I, I I have a soft spot for these types of movies, and I I really enjoyed watching it again. Yeah, it was really good, man. Nice, nice. Yeah, this is a nine. Um, it's, it's really good. What else can I say? I mean, I've said it all during the course of this podcast. Pretty clear. I like it. Um, you know, maybe it could have benefited from a a little bit more of a budget, but I don't know. I don't know that that would have made it any better. I think they, they did perfectly with what they had. Mm. Yeah. Agreed. I, I'm, I'm, I didn't know it was such a low budget flick because it really doesn't, doesn't show as a low budget flick. Makes it even more impressive they were able to get this done on a low budget. Absolutely, absolutely more impressive. Absolutely, the, you know the uh, it never lot. <clears throat> didn't have a lot of money. Yeah, they had to keep the uh, to keep the pizza in the fridge cut up with scissors. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is so shot. Work. Work. It's really like it's really more like a Barry White kind of voice, baby. Say gingivitis. <laughs> gingivitis. That's right, baby. I'm talking say, about gingivitis. Say doohickey. Doohickey. The sexy slither of a lady snake. Good times. All right. Uh, Segway. What are we doing next week? Nothing on schedule, bro. Dun, dun, dun. I was just I was thinking uh back in the beginning, man, I, I really want to do a Tom Selleck Western. We should do Quigley Down Under at some yeah. point. Yeah, that's a great movie. Rickman, Tom Selleck, you know. Sure. That's right. it. In honor oh, in honor week? of our Quigley Down Under reference yeah. earlier in the show, I think we should we should yeah, do, let's Down do it. Under. Yeah, I mean we all love Tom Selleck. I know Ben loves his mustache. I love his mustache too. I mean, it's just it's begging to be done. So there you have it, folks. That uh, the sh- the scene with him with the rifle, man, I love that. Just the long shot, so good. I'm new here, so I'm curious. Yeah, coming off uh, of all the westerns with the Mando Boba Fett stuff, let's go with an actual. Yeah, western. exactly. Hmm. Yeah, an actual western that takes place in Australia. Australia. Uh, Works Australia. for me, baby. Yeah, it's good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Thanks for joining us for Alex Garland, and uh, we'll see you next week for Quickly Down Under. Down Under. Bye now. Ciao. See ya. And that's going to wrap up this week's episode, folks. You can find the show notes for this episode in your podcast app O choice or on our website, ebd.fm forward slash episodes forward slash 146. If you'd like to support this groovy show, you can do so by rating us and reviewing us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also tell a friend to check out the show. And you can support us on Patreon. Don't forget to check us out on social media. We use the handle at EBD Podcast everywhere. Thanks for joining us for this episode, folks, and we'll see you next time.
Bidi bidi bidi. Do hickey.